Where are the teams at? Where are they at? Yeah. I'm more looking just at, at Oregon, the swing there, than thinking about what happened like the week before. We were really good against USC, played a winning game versus UCLA. The record is is what it is. The last, like you said, five games. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I just I wasn't pleased with uh, you know how we defended uh, in either game really. Well, the first half we were fine versus Oregon. Second half of that game, and then. Uh, virtually the whole game versus Oregon State. I'm not taking anything away from both of those teams. I mean, uh, Oregon, uh, I think, made 12 or 13 shots in a row against us at one point in the second half, which if I did a drill with, like, one of my better teams and asked them to make that many shots, like, outside of the paint, I don't, I don't know we could be there a while just to get a team to make that many consecutive shots. So, um, you know, but they played, you know, fantastic in that second half. And then Oregon State's got some good young players. They're 10 and 2 at home. They uh, they played very well. They jumped us early in the game. They, uh, you know, had the win coming off the win versus Arizona. And uh, we weren't able to, to climb back in the game. And uh, so, but we didn't get the necessary stops. We're allowing teams to shoot too high uh, percentages against us. I think. Our, our ability to create turnovers is fine and our activity at that end of the floor is fine, but we're not like sitting down and just getting stops and making people miss. And uh, that's got to get better if we're going to you know, win games, especially on the road. So where are the guys now coming out of their home, playing home great one? Well, I mean, we tried to reemphasize that, um, you know, we're one game out of first place right now, uh, despite what happened in Oregon. and. Uh, we're right there, and, and now we're at home for two games. And, uh, you know, it's, it's it's a big challenge because uh, both of those teams, you know, when we played them in the Bay, both had, you know, double-digit leads versus us in the second half. Uh, you know, Stanford multiple times went ahead 10, went ahead 8, and we, you know, we stuck in the game. We're pretty resilient in that game, and we're able to, you know, fight back and find a way to win. And uh, and the same thing with Cal. I mean, we were down big in that second half. So these are two teams that that are very good basketball teams, uh, and uh, we we have to play very well in order to have a chance to win. Home isn't going to do isn't going to be enough. Is it hard to play defense the way you want to play it because you're limited in personnel and just from a physical standpoint? to press and press and press and do what you need to do to create the turnovers? Does it make it difficult where you are from a personnel standpoint? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, you do the best you can with, with, with the hand you're dealt. And certainly we're, we we tilt more to the quick twitch athletic side that, you know, our activity flying around the court. If we're playing good defense, it should feel like there are six guys out there. and. Uh, I just don't think we were, you know, energetic enough, particularly throughout the entire Oregon State game. And, you know, we just have to do a better job and we have to be more desperate at that end of the floor. And then we can't allow our inability to make shots to bleed into our defense. And I think that was some of the case uh, against uh, Oregon State. We, you know, we were so bad at, at perimeter shooting in, in that game. and. You know, it, it impacted you know our our ability to get stops. When your guys on the film, did they agree with you on the energy issue? You know, I mean, we we tried to focus on on positive examples on defense, and then you know some of the issues at that end of the floor, and just you know kind of dial into you know our communication and uh, multiple efforts and, and those types of things, and uh, and then we also we we. We watched some of the shots that were missed, you know, uh, particularly from three, you know, and, and a majority of them were, were pretty clean. They uh, they weren't forced shots or contested shots that, you know, the percentages should significantly drop. So we just, you know, we gotta we gotta step in the shots and make them because teams aren't gonna let us attack the paint if you if you can't prove that you can shoot the ball. Uh, did you turn? You're asking me developing the bench. Yeah, I mean, I, I said Sean Phillips was one of the bright spots in the Oregon State game, and that loss just the way he finished the game, and uh, you know he was able to attack the basket. He was posting up aggressively. He was going after the offensive class. So uh, you know, if if we could get more of an inside presence like that from him on on a relatively consistent basis. That would give our, our offense more balance so we could throw the ball inside, play inside out. This whole season, really, the only way we played inside out is through Jose Perez posting up a guard. So 
you know, it'd be nice to, to see that, you know, we could maybe develop a guy that, that we trust that we could throw the ball into a little bit. And then back off that, I mean, Sean's, Sean's performance, I know, obviously, unfortunately, Fallon out there, but playing aggressive, but, I mean, even from the first few games he's back, what kind of growth did you see from him in that Oregon State game? I, I liked it. It didn't defeat him, you know, what was happening in that game because we just couldn't, you know, it was at 20 and then we go to 16 and we got it to 15 one time and had two straight threes to try and get it to 12. And, and we could just never, you know, put any game pressure on Oregon State. But that didn't really stop Sean from uh, going out there and trying to be as productive as he could with the minutes he got. Any update as to Meeks and Long? Are they still indefinite? Um, you know, Bryson is is uh, is working through the medical stuff and and some testing things, uh, and, and we're hope to have more answers. Uh, you know, for Bryson and uh, as far as Zane, there's there's been no new changes there. Coach Jose has been a key factor for the past this season. In your opinion, where do you think he's been such a big figure in this season? I think Jose, uh, it's a tough situation for him. And I've said it you know before when you don't get the whole summer, you know, with your teammates just to you know, to build that, that chemistry connection you're, you're trying to, to build. Uh, but he's uh, he's done a great job uh, recently. He was really good on offense for us, uh, and, and particularly in a game that we struggled at Oregon State. Uh, and uh, he had two two very good games at that end of the floor for us. So, um, yeah, he's great with his experience, What uh, all the college basketball he's played. He's been in a lot of games. He's a unique type of player, brings uh, something different to, to what we bring on the floor. Yeah, I mean, you just, uh, you know, it's tough when you're struggling and uh, and and to try and gain confidence. Uh, you know, we we stressed to him before we hit the road in Oregon just that, uh, you know, that there's a lot of a lot of season left to be played. That you know, don't let where you're at now define you. You know, there's, uh, you know, and, and he could still make a push. And you know, I, you know, I still believe in what I saw, and I think that. You know, you, you got to trust that. Uh, we have to trust that. Uh, I think there'll there'll be some games in his future here that he'll help us, and uh, and hopefully, you know, he's continues to stay the course and practice hard, gets himself ready to play. Coach Frank says he's going to donate twenty bucks to an elementary school back home for Mr. Davis this season. How important is that kind of character off the court? Can you talk about his character off the court? A little bit? Yeah, I mean that's that's impressive that that uh, you know you. you you're not thinking about yourself, you know, and it's uh, thinking about others and helping people. I'm sure along the way for Frankie, there's been a lot of people that have helped him, impact him, uh, given him a chance to get where he is. So it's nice to see that he's trying to, to give back. Coach, February 1st tomorrow, it's important now you get on the run, isn't it? You're in February, March, 11 Pac-12 games you know, and then yeah. you're in the tournament. Yeah. How important is that right now to get that? I mean, we're in the hunt, you know, I mean, we're right there. So it's, uh, you know, there's a lot to play for. And uh, I'm sure most of the teams in the league think they're still in it, you know, based on how tightly packed everything is. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's still hope that, that we could, you know, get on a run and make a surge. Uh, you know, my last two years here, we played very well in February and, uh, you know, hoping that we could recapture some of that here as we go through this month. Coach, only a couple home games left down the stretch. How important are the – the student section, 942 crew, and the curtain distraction going to be in these last few home games? It's huge. I mean, it's 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 really big to create that environment. And, uh, and you know, it was awesome versus uh, USC. And just to, you know, hopefully we get, they you know, everybody sticks with us and realize, hey, we had a tough week. But, uh, you know, we're, we're still right there. And uh, these are two huge games for us at home. And uh, so we're hoping for, for a big, uh, big turnout because a lot could happen by the end of this week, positively or negatively. Bobby, I don't know. I don't have any idea who your boss is right now. But is there what does an athletic director do that helps a basketball coach during the season? Is there anything like helping you with refs or talking to the conference? Is there anything you're missing out on by not having the AD search done? No, I, I don't think so. I've been, uh, you know, working very closely with our sports administrator. Uh, and then uh, Jim Rund has been really good in this transition process for me, just the conversations that we've had about, you know, where things are, are at right now with, with uh, the search and just trying to help me with things that I need. And so um, he's been very accessible. So, uh, yeah, in, in a perfect world, you would love to, to, to have, you know, someone in place. But, you know, I think it's important to, 
to get these type of decisions right and to take as much time as necessary in order to do that. Yeah, that's the thing about this game that, that, you know, I wish I had the answers to, right? When you're, you're going into these games, I probably, my stress levels wouldn't be where they were if I kind of knew what was going to happen, you know? <laughs> and, and with a guy like Adam, I, you know, I trust his track record that, you know, he's a double-figure scorer in the SEC. He was a McDonald's All-American. He's, uh, he's a really good player. I mean, he, uh, so yes, we, we, we need him to put the ball in the basket if he's open and, I've seen it happen again throughout the off season to know that he's capable of doing it and just going through a, a tough stretch. You, know, you go through these internal struggles with your confidence and and uh, that's for him to figure out. Like he knows his shot and what things he might, what adjustments he might have to make. Uh, and as far as Jemai, I just I, I just want him to be aggressive. You know, be a, be aggressive at both ends of the floor. I think he. He, he, he wasn't a, you know, a little bit too passive in both of those games offensively, just trying to attack. So, you know, hopefully he'll do that a little more this week. Coach, after the street performance Well, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we just didn't miss. We missed layups too. We missed layups and jump shots. And so, I mean, it was, uh, the perfect storm of missing shots in that game, the Oregon State game. And, uh, you know, just remind them, hey, you know, these guys are in kind of like the one percentile of basketball players that get to play at this level. If you're at this level and you have an open shot and, and Coach Hurley is letting you take that shot, man, we got to just hit them at a better clip. We just got to, you know, we got to step into those shots with confidence and, uh, and, and you know, because that'll open the court up more for the guys who we have that can attack off the dribble. But until that happens, we're just going to, you know, the court is going to shrink massively. And so we have to prove that, that we can, uh, you know, make those shots. I mean, I, I've seen these guys in shooting drills and scrimmages and other games, other year. That I know they could all make the shots, you know, or else I would, you know, wouldn't let them take them. Now, you get to a certain point and the numbers are what they are at a certain point in the season. So, you know, we're, we're, we're not good at that right now, you know, shooting the ball, mainly from three more than two. But uh, there's still time to, for guys to, you know, to find themselves and, and be able to execute and make those shots. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, we have to, you know, we have a certain style, a certain way that we play. And uh, I don't think we're built to, you know, just milk the ball, take the air out of the ball, and then hope someone can make a shot late in the clock. We can't really throw it inside like that. We, uh, you know, we have to be able to get out in transition before defense could get set and find a way to get a, an easy shot that way. So I, I'm not going to micromanage uh, the offense. It's, uh, you know, you got to trust your players. This is who we have in Arizona State uniforms playing. And I don't play to be conservative and, and hope that the other team misses. And, and, you know, if the other team wants to play very deliberate and slow and they have the guards to do that and we're in that type of game, well, we got to survive that type of game. But that's not my preference. It's never been my preference. Uh, it's why you saw the crowd as excited as it was in the USC game, because you know we were active, making plays, getting out in the open court, dunking the ball. Crowd was going nuts. That's what I want people to come here and watch. I don't want to come here and watch the paint dry here at the, at the DFA Center. Coach, uh, you know you've been talking about being in double-digit deficits in Cal and the Stanford game. When you won those games, of course, those kind of situations you want to put yourself in. So how are you going to try to you know, limit that and not put yourself in that situation? Yeah, I mean, there's no saying that that won't happen again. I mean, I, it's it, it could happen. I mean, it, you know, we got down, we were down eight to USC in the, in the first half, 31-23, and went on a huge run and you know, kind of gained momentum in that in that game. So, this is basketball. You're gonna go through stretches where a team 
might have it going offensively and you, you're having a hard time scoring it and you're going to find yourself in a deficit and you got to fight your way out of it. So I don't, I don't think anything is going to be easy or, or we're going to be able to avoid our opponent you know, completely shutting down our opponent. Like history has told me this year that we, you know, we haven't really dominated opponents like in here like, or anywhere. Like we, we do a great job of being resilient, gritty, staying in the game, fight back, you know, not give in. Uh, but I, this team has not shown me yet that we just could go and dismantle somebody. Basketball the game of runs, and some of your guys' biggest losses this season, you've been on the wrong side of some runs. Have you seen any sort of overarching trend uh, throughout the season that has sort of prevented you guys from putting together a full 40? Uh, I mean, we're doing the best we can, and the guys that we have here are doing the best we can. That's all I could say. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, we are, uh, we're in a different world, and, and there's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not what it was here, you know, five, six, seven years ago, level playing field. So, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be in some of these struggles and we got to fight through it and work our way through it, you know, unless, you know, we really get unified and, and get multiple guys playing well in a game. And then we'll avoid that. Like if we have four or five guys producing at both ends of the floor in one game, then we're not going to get blown out like that. Uh, we were down 24. We lost to Oregon by 24 in the in the second half, and then we just lost by 15 at uh, you know in the first half. So we were minus 39 and one full game in the last two halves. So like this is you know not acceptable. It's not who we are. We're not stopping anybody. We're uh, our defense uh, you know didn't show up to play. We we you know basically said those type of things that we have to. You know, if we're having a hard time getting stops and we got to make shots, we're not doing that either. So it was, uh, you know, a little bit of everything at halftime. But you don't just go in there and say, hey, fellas, everything's going to be fine. You know, we're in good shape right now. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, those, those are some tough moments that you're, you know, you're trying to, trying to reach your guys to get them to, you know, to play a little harder, play better. We were talking earlier about guys can make shots, but they're not making them all the time. How do you get guys, how, how do you help them through a slump when they're just in a shooting slump? I know they're pressing harder, right? Trying to make it. Yeah. How do you get them to relax a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I just uh, encourage them to, you know, to get extra work in, to, to work on your game. That's the only, I mean, I've, the only reason I made a shot really was because I was obsessed with, with being good at it. And, and I, I would work after practice. I would get extra shots in, extra conditioning in. So I wouldn't be tired in, in the second half of games. So we talked about, you know, just trying to be obsessed with with being good, and you know, I think these kids are under a lot of pressure too. It's like, you know, they have social media, they have their own circles. People like, hey, are you going to get to the league? What are you, you know, what are you doing a month from now? Are you have you had a good enough season statistically to for individual goals? I think uh, important to stay in the moment and and think about getting better every day and not, you know, what's going to happen a month from now or. Where, you know, where's our season going? Like, I think you, you can put too much pressure on yourself and looking forward, too much forward to what's going to happen and not just thinking about this week and these practices and getting ready for Stanford. And if you do that, I think we'll, we'll maybe relax and have better success.